Hi guys! Today's video idea came to me as a request from somebody. So Sarah C asked if I could share a little bit about my reading notebook and my process with journaling and, and the way that I keep track of everything in my reading journal. And I was like, sure, I can definitely do that. So today I'm going to show you a little bit of my reading notebook and give you a little tour of how I keep track of my yearly book statistics. I have so many different notebooks. There's always a little bit of overlap between them, but in general, I try to keep all of my booktube and book related content when I'm journaling or using a notebook for whatever reason to a specific one. So the first like booktube notebook I had is this one right here. This has the scream on it. This one is, is pretty, battered at this point. It is almost entirely full, um, so I'm not really using this one too much anymore. After I mostly filled it up, I moved on to this one. This is a smaller little notebook with poppies on it, and I still have a decent amount of space in the back of this one, so I am still using it. However, I don't think the amount of space that I have is going to last me for the rest of 2020 because I started this notebook at the beginning of 2019 and I've filled up more than half of it. So for 2020, I wanted to start a new notebook and put all of my book stats at the beginning of that one. And so this would be my most current reading notebook. So this is the one that I have for that. It's pretty much the same style as this one. I think they must be made by the same company because they're pretty much the same notebook. Uh, but this one has books on it. It's super cute. So I have just started this one. And what I did with this notebook for, this was like my 2019 notebook, I started this notebook with my statistics and so I filled them out all year. I'm doing the same with this one. So for 2020 I have all of my book statistics at the beginning and then I will continue to use those beginning pages to fill out my stats and use the rest of the notebook throughout the year for whatever reason I need. So I think I'm going to cut this video to a close-up of the actual notebooks and I will show you a little bit of the contents of them and kind of how I use them and my system. I have absolutely no knowledge of like professional journaling or organizing whatsoever. I don't know anything about bullet journaling. I don't really have any desire to learn about that because I just do what works for me. That is enough for me. I am going to take you through my process of filling out my statistics for a specific book and you can see that and then I'll, I'll share a little bit about how I use the rest of my notebook. So let's go! So for starters, I apologize if this angle is a little weird, but this is kind of the best I could do. Let's look at my 2019 notebook right here. So my 2019 book statistics are at the beginning here. This is just where I kept track of everything. I obviously shared all this information in my 2019 statistics video, but here's where I filled everything out. So I had this at the beginning of the notebook. After the statistics is where I just have my reading notebook. Anything related to booktube or reading that I want to keep track of in my notebook, I will just use. So as you can see here, a lot of the stuff I will use my notebook for is TBRs because I want to write down my ideas for TBRs and not forget them. So like here is my Reading Rush TBR for 2019 and I had a list of ideas and I, I crossed some of the things off that I didn't end up wanting to read during that week. Um, here is my TBR TBR. So this was from the video where I went back and looked at all of my TBRs from past readathons and figured out which ones I had read or not. So I basically just went back and rewatched videos on my channel that were all TBRs and I wrote out the readathon, whether I had read it or not, yes, no. And then for the ones where I hadn't read a book, I wrote out the title of the book. So that's all from that video. And these are just my notes on that. These are notes from 
my reading vlog during the reading rush in 2019. I had information in my video for every screen. I had like how many pages I had read, how many challenges I'd been completing. So these are just kind of chicken scratch notes of every time I updated a video, I wrote down like how far into every single book I was and then I was able to calculate how many pages into the book. This right here was just a page where I was planning out VEDA of that year. So these were all my video ideas and me like crossing out when I finished them, rearranging things a little bit. Here is my list of all of the Prince books throughout the years and I have crossed out the ones that I've read. Here we have another TBR. If you're wondering about these X's that are on a lot of the pages, this is my weird organizational thing. I take a highlighter and whenever I'm done with a page, I cross it out with the highlighter. So I use a highlighter so that I can still read everything on the page if I wanna go back to it. It's really helpful for me when I'm flipping through my notebook and I'm looking for something relevant my brain just cancels out all of the pages that have a big X through them. So anything that doesn't have an X through it is something that I still need to work on, or it's like a in progress sort of thing. So obviously Contemporary-a-thon is over. I don't need this TBR anymore. It has no use to me, so I just do a big X. These pages aren't X'd out because I am still very much in progress with reading all of the Prince books. So this right here was me organizing all of the rest of the books that I still needed to wrap up for 2019. So I was uh, sectioning those off into different videos. So these were the three wrap ups that I did. And then this was my list of books that I wanted to include for my recommendations video for uh, five books by black authors. So this one actually I am done with, so I can cross this one off as well because that video is done. So that's how I do that. And yeah, those are my 2019 favorites and least favorites where I was kind of figuring out what the list was. I was making some notes about the star ratings for all of the books that I put on my favorites and least favorite list. And then I was also writing down all the author names. So I have this on hand when I film the video so I don't forget what I wanted to talk about. So this is my most recent reading notebook and that's a little glimpse into how I use it. Now, let me show you how I fill out my statistics. So this is my 2020 book, and let me just show you how I fill this out. So the first thing here is my list of all of the books. So I've already filled it out for January for all the books I read. In February, we read The Ringmaster's Secret at the beginning of the month. And then the next thing I have not filled out yet is the only thing worse than me is you by Lily Anderson. So I just write out the title and the author and then I also write out the page count. So while I'm doing this, I will pull up Goodreads and I will pull up the page for whatever book I'm filling out and use that as information. So let's do the only thing. The only thing worse than me is You by Lily Anderson. And let's see. Well, actually, I, I, go, I went to other editions automatically because usually I have it set to the audiobook version. Does this, does this book not even have an audiobook? That would explain why... I had to read it physically. But anyway, I go and I look at the hardcover edition, how many pages? So it looks like there's 352. So I will just write that right there. Um, and then at the end of the month, I do fill out the total number of books I read and I'll add up all the pages. So I have lots of blank space here to fill up with books that I'll read throughout the year. This right here is something new that I've added. I am hoping to keep track of all of the audiobook narrators that I listened to in 2020 and see if there are some standouts. I have a feeling that this list is just going to get incredibly long and it's not gonna be very cohesive, but I just wanna keep track of this and see if it amounts to anything. But I didn't listen to this on audio, so I'm just skipping that. 
Next up we have age range. So I have my different categories all set out. And the only thing worse than me is you is YA. So I will just do a little tally on there. Go to the next page is publication year. This is when I will go back to Goodreads. And I will scroll down and look at the publication year is 2016. So I'll do a little mark by the 2016. Genre is going to be contemporary. The rating I gave it was four stars. And the format in which I read it is physical. Next up we have the time period. So I'm going to do a mark for present. Um, for specific time periods, I've started a list down here, but I'm obviously not not keeping track of present because that's all going to be the same. Next we are going to go to countries represented, United States. Now US states represented. This is where it becomes a little bit difficult. I'm actually going to pull out my phone here and I have been keeping this note in my phone with ongoing information about the setting of the books I read because I have found that it's really really hard for me to remember specific settings from books. The last one I read was The Ringmaster's Secret and there was some international travel in that book so every time they went to a new place I just remembered to open up my notes app and keep track of it to remind myself when I filled out my statistics. I can actually delete this one because I already read this book and I already finished filling it out. But the next one I have is The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You, and I don't think that the book ever specifically stated where it took place. But I received two clues. One of the characters mentioned the U of O, so I pulled up my notes app and I wrote O state because I thought maybe whatever state it took place in probably started with an O because usually people aren't talking about like the U unless it's the state where they live in. And then also I wrote West Coast. I honestly don't remember what part of the book that was from, but I guess that there was some clue that indicated that it took place on the West Coast. If the book had specifically stated where it took place, I would have just written it in there, but it didn't. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to Google it. Let's see. The only thing worse than me is you setting. Um, not sure. The two clues that I've received, West Coast and O State, I, I feel like maybe it takes place in Oregon. Honestly, do you say it Oregon or Oregon or like or 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 Oregon? I don't know how to say that state ever. Um, but I'm gonna go down to the community reviews, and you can say search review text. And there are zero reviews that mention Oregon. Let me try setting, high school setting. I'm not sure. Let me, let me try that. No. Where does this say? This isn't helping me. I'm not sure. Well, I did some digging. I don't think I know what state this took place in. My best guess is Oregon, but I didn't really get anything that confirmed that. So, so I'm just going to do a mark by unknown because I don't know for sure. All right, on to gender. We have a female author a female protagonist, and a female author writing a female protagonist. I separated these three things because that did not work out super well to have them unseparated last year. 
All right, onto this we have whether it was part of a series. It technically is the first in a series. That's what it says on Goodreads, so that's what I'm going with. Now I just have some kind of specific questions that I like to answer. Was it an author I've read before? Yes, it was. I have read Undead Girl Gang by Lily Anderson before. Did I cry? No, I do not believe this book made me cry. It was very happy. Next up, we have all of the diversity in the book. So this book wasn't super diverse, actually. Um, I don't think there were any queer characters, so I'm not going to mark protagonist or secondary. I'm going to do a mark by none. So I have specific identities represented. I'm not going to fill anything out. Moving on to racial diversity. The main character was definitely white. She described herself that way, uh, but there were a couple major secondary characters who were people of color. So I will mark the secondary category. Moving on to the author, Lily Anderson is Afro-Latina, I believe. Uh, she definitely is a person of color. And then as for identities represented, I only do that for the protagonist, so I'm skipping that. For mental illness, I don't think there was any, so I'm gonna hit none. Disability, I actually am not 100% sure because there is a major secondary character in this book who had a leg injury and he is limited by this injury throughout the course of the book and he mentions that he's not sure yet if he's going to fully heal from it or not but it's possible that he will and i honestly don't know if people would consider that to be disability representation or not i really don't know but i'm gonna say none for now but i will make a note of that later as for the book format it is a novel more stats owned versus unowned i do own it it was the first time i read it it was not translated it was definitely written in english repeat authors i have not read another lily anderson book this year so it's not a repeat author but i am kind of thinking that i want to read not now not ever sometime this year so i'm going to write her name down and just do a little one so i've read one book by her and i'm pretty sure that i will read a second and i will be able to start filling this out as you can see i have filled out a few authors where i just have read one book by them but i expect to potentially read a second by them so i'm just going to mark it for now and we'll see how the tallies end up at the end of the year now we are on to publisher and this is when i go back to my computer and I always look up the title of the book. And I go to the Amazon page actually, because Amazon has information that's really easily accessible about publisher. You go down to product details. The publisher is St. Martin's Griffin. So that is what I'm going to fill out here. I don't think I have anything, no. I don't see that yet, so I'm going to write St. Martin's Griffin, and then do a tally. At the end here, I have a little section for notes. So I use this section to fill out anything I may need to remember that I'm going to forget if I don't write it down. So I'm actually going to make a note about this one. So I'm just filling out a note for myself that I checked none for disability and I checked unknown state. That is something I might want to come back to in, in the future and just verify that I organize those appropriately. So I might want to do a little bit more digging, see if I can figure out the state. I might want to ask around and see if maybe the character who is kind of chronically injured and dealing with that, if that would qualify as disability representation. I'm going to find out maybe and and possibly go back and change what I filled out. So that's why I have this note for myself to make sure I remember exactly what tally marks I made if I need to do some more digging. And that's it. I do that for every single book that I read. I just write the name of the book and then I go through page by page and I fill out all the information. And then at the end of the year, I'll have it all finished and I can just tally everything up and all my statistics will be right there. So if you're interested in doing this for yourself, I mean, you definitely could look up a spreadsheet because there are tons of them online. But if you're like me and you just wanna keep it in a notebook, 
I mean, pretty much figure out what you want to keep track of. And you might want to do it this way. I don't know. I think that's it. Alrighty, so that is that. I hope that gave you some insight into how I utilize my bookish notebooks. And maybe this gave you some ideas of how you might want to journal. I would be a little bit surprised if it did because I know it's kind of chaotic and I know that there are definitely more organized ways to use a journal, but this is just how I do it. There you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.